You're listening to The Big Cast, your source for the latest in financial technology. Brought to you weekly by the Best Innovation Group with your hosts, John Best and Glenn Servati. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of The Big Cast. My name is John Best. I'm the CEO of Best Innovation Group, and we like to do cool things for financial institutions, all kinds of stuff. And with me, is my partner in crime. And by crime, I mean these podcasts. Definitely uh, not Glenn, financial crime. Definitely not financial not crimes. Crime. No, no financial crimes. Is uh, Glenn Cervati. Glenn, how are I, you? I'm good. A little warm, but other than that, uh, not sure if you got the same heat wave we do down here. In we Atlanta. did. It was 102 yesterday. Oh, oh yeah. I'm going to shut up then. I think you, you beat us. Yeah, it was pretty hot out here, but you know, we're closer to the sun than you. So <laughs> that's what happens in Colorado Springs when you sit at about you know, five, 6,000 feet. Uh, you're a long way from there, but we can actually see it's like, you know, when solar flares happen, they hit us first. A lot of people don't know that, but it's true. So, hey, we got a lot of stuff to talk about. Yeah, do you want to jump every, in? Every week this seems to be going on right now. Yeah, I, yeah the I, simulation I, is really cranked up. I think somebody added some memory or something. Well, I, I thought of you immediately when I heard about this one, which came up last week, um, given that you're sitting on the ground in Colorado. I think it gave us a better, you know, on the scene kind of uh, perspective. New law passed by the Colorado State Legislature governing artificial intelligence. And I think it's kind of, gen, you know, really pushed forward by the Gen AI, uh, chat GPT type attention. But as I read it, it pretty much applies across the board. It's one of the first states that's actually gone to this level. It and, is the first state that's gone to this level, I believe. So from that state, let me let me stop right there for a second, because I'm curious, you know, when you're in the weeds of the world of financial technology and other types of tech and whatnot, it can seem like these things are just huge stories everywhere. You, know, you and I have talked already about the uh, Illinois uh, interchange rule, the uh, law that was passed as part of the budget process a couple of weeks ago, which was a huge deal for card issuers. And when I checked in with some friends in Illinois, kind of seeing what the thought was, they're like, what are you talking about? They'd never even heard of it. So I was really curious to see. I mean, I think AI is a little bit more kind of front and center in the public imagination. You know, what are, what are you hearing, you know, in the local media, not not the real heavy tech media, but just in the, you know, the everyday sense? What What's the what's the portrayal of the, you know, the thoughts on on this uh, this new law? Sure. So, you know, what we've seen Right now, first, you have to remember, it doesn't um, take effect till uh, February 2026. Correct. So, you know, there's a little bit of time on this. And so what what the press has been so far is that, you know, Colorado is sort of leading the United States in this with AI. And, um, you know, they uh, they talk a lot about um, that's been sort of the message so far is that, um that you know that that Colorado is going to lead this, and um, but there's also been uh, other folks who have spoken up in uh, you know, for example, CPR is a um, a local uh, you know, it's, it, it's a local news source in Colorado Public lot. Radio. Yeah, okay. and, and they talk so, a lot about. Sounds like uh, heart resuscitation. I was confused for a second. Yeah, you do a little CPR here, but. Um, you know, they, they've had folks on that say, Hey, you know, it's a little early to be writing a bill. It's kind of like, uh, you know, starting to make law, but you know, make laws on things before sort of the product is done. It'll get better. And some of these laws will, will not matter anymore. Definitely a chicken and egg glass, half full, half empty. I mean, I was kind of wondering, was it, Hey, this is great. We got to get in front of this or, Oh, here we go. Mess it up. You know, progress. I could see it, you know, being positioned either way. Yeah. And, and then there was like, uh, like our, our governor, who is a, a very different governor, uh, as you know, uh, he's, he's a different guy. Um, and not because of his, uh, his sexual orientation, but just because he's a different guy. And he's done a lot of things I think are pretty interesting and innovative, but um, he actually didn't think the bill went far enough. Um, is that you know, what it was? Cause I, I saw that. I thought it was really interesting that he, signed the bill, he approved the bill, but then he actually wrote a note back to the legislator saying, I still have reservations about this. I think we should do more. Yeah. We should alter it before it goes into effect. But I had not heard that. So what you're saying is he thinks this should actually go further. He wasn't, I thought he might want to pull it back because I thought he said something about making sure it doesn't inhibit business or impede. Yeah, he wants the, you know, 
His quote was, I want to be clear my goal of ensuring Colorado remains the home to innovate technologies yeah. and our consumers are able to fully access important AI-based products. And, and that access was interesting to me because I had something happen to me just recently. Um, I had been looking at this site. I, you know, I play around with the AI art all the time. You've seen me make all yeah. kinds of stuff. And uh, there's a site I like to go to where people make stuff and I was just poking around. And when I was traveling recently... I tried to go to it and it popped up and said I had to be 18 at least to get in. But then when I came back here, it went away. And I realized that there's been some rules, uh, particularly in areas like Washington. I think it was DC. It was GAC when I was there that these sites, uh, some sites, because there are things on there and that's where I like to learn what people are doing. I, I sort of go on that site, try to assess, especially after new versions of mid journey, stable diffusion stuff come out. Cause I want to see what really smart people are doing with it and how it differs from what they were doing with it before. Like how have they taken it forward? And there are some, you know, not safe for work stuff on there, uh, content. And as a result of that, uh, you know, the organization or pardon me, there's been laws put in place in uh, various places where depending on where you are, it has to ask you, you know, how old you are. Now, I, don't know what, so I, I don't know what kids going, oh, well, I can't get in there because I'm 18, not 18. Yeah, but... all you got to do is click and say yes. But it, it's right. interesting. I hadn't thought about that. So the same site is checking your IP address. And if you're logging in from a different place, you may or may not trigger that extra, yes, I am 18 screen. I, I hadn't thought yeah. about that. Wow. Like, and, and so Connecticut tried to put a law like this through, but it didn't go through. Um, there's been narrower stuff done. For example, New York City requires employers using AI technologies to conduct uh, independent bias audits on some of the tools and share the results publicly. But you know that's still hard. But what the first thing I thought of that when I read the when I read this was, um, does it differentiate between what I'll call machine learning um, and then what we're gonna you know been calling the large language model? And it really doesn't. Um, it said it does say that there's sort of high risk, like it differentiates on. Um, I was going to point. I was going to point that out because it does. It's really I, the the higher standard is applied to high risk systems, as they call it. Yeah, it, they have eight categories: financial and lending. Not surprisingly, is in there. So is insurance, another financial service. Right. Uh, healthcare is one of those. Legal, education, but. Yeah, you know, the bottom line is financial and, and uh, lending is in there. So this is going to impact anybody who's doing business in the state of Colorado from a financial standpoint. Yeah, and, and it's actually the developer's responsibility uh, if their system is deemed high risk uh, to take reasonable care to avoid, you know, algorithmic discrimination and provide transparency. So uh, you also have the right, if you think you've been like discriminated against, um, you have the right to... Uh, reach out, kind of like you have the right to get a copy of your credit report. Um, so yeah. Oh, and they have to disclose, which I think also was interesting because if you remember, um, this feels a little like uh, when we, you know, had to disclose who we share data with, right? Uh, the Privacy Act, and you know, there was a, you know, if you share your data with someone, then you have to have it in the Privacy Act in the disclosure. So yeah, I, I think all in all. Um, it's very interesting because obviously there's great concern about it and to be fair. It's kind of rightly so. So for example, you know, you heard the story about um, when Gemini was released, which Gemini is yeah. a really good AI, but uh, if you asked it to show you a picture of uh, George Washington uh, to make you one, cause you know, it can do kind of uh, you know, the, the AI art, if you will, uh, it would portray him as a person of color and you couldn't, you'd have to fight it off to get it not to do it because it was so heavily programmed against bias and against, you know, uh, to avoid sort of using all uh, Caucasian or, or white people or, or, you know, one race in a, in a picture that it went the other way. Uh, you know, and people called it, you know, the, the woke and I or the woke <laughs> Gemini or whatever they called it. But, but um so, yeah, this is of great concern. Uh, and it's interesting that Polis, who is typically someone who would, you know, uh, really push on these sorts of things, kind of came out and said, well, but, you know, he's he's right to be worried because there is a huge tech market. You know, the DTC, which is the Denver uh, 
the De the Denver Technical Center, which is you know a big place for huge companies. There's a ton of companies down there. Oh, you sure and don't want to be the ones that are pushing them out if they've already established. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think that's, a that's growth area, no question. Yeah, it's it's definitely interesting. So, a couple of things um, that came to my mind that I just want to make sure we get on the table on this. Uh, I totally agree with you. One of the things that's you know so complicated about this is when I read what they're suggesting, it all makes sense to me. It, it sounds good. The challenge that we've got, which we come up against more and more these days, is it's being done on a state level. And it just gets so darn complicated trying to keep these things straight. I mean, what if some states allow it? What if another state passes something that's a little bit different? And all of a sudden, you've got to comply with 50 different sets of rules. You know, you know, great to get out ahead. And maybe that means that this becomes the template by which they wind up coming up with a federal law as well. But it is not really practical for every state to kind of do this themselves. And you, you pointed out, I mean, I love that phrase, algorithmic discrimination. <laughs> it sounds like something. Yeah. If somebody had like put that. It sounds like an awesome band name. I like Dude, that. Did you see was, algorithmic discrimination the other day? Yeah, man. I was thinking about like, you know, if somebody put that in a science fiction uh, story 20 years ago, that would have sounded so heady. It's like it's about as, you know, brave new world as it gets. Yeah, it's true. But you know, the, the ones that I was also thinking, I mean, and also I, when you're talking about disclosure, you know, if you're supposed to, the, you know, the purveyors are supposed to let consumers know if they're interacting with AI, which sounds to me a little bit like the, hey, just so you know, you're being recorded on this voice interaction. Kind of a Yeah, there. yeah. I, I, I think that, I think that that problem is going to take care of itself. I think that the, the level that these things of, of interacting are capable of that I wouldn't have a problem if it popped on and just said, Hey, I'm, you know, I'm Sam, you're, I'm an AI, but yeah. I'm here to try to help you with this or that. And the fact that it could sort of talk with you, it's not like the, I, that's where I think this is a problem is I don't think they've adequately defined AI because yeah. banks have been using expert systems, machine learning for, Years and years and years and years. I mean, if you think about fraud, right? So how many times has fraud stopped me from legitimately using my credit card somewhere that I actually wanted to use? Um, can I use this law? Can I go, I believe I'm being discriminated against by Falcon. You know, I think, um, and you and I are insiders, so we know what that means, Falcon or, or any AI service that's doing neural networking to determine fraud in a payments platform. Um, I, I would think that opens the door. That's uh, an interesting next... point. I mean, and that's, and, you know, and this is the typical danger too. It, uh, I think this was a relatively late addition. You know, they, they passed this on relatively short notice. And mm -hmm. this is the challenge when, you know, people who are in the trenches actually that would have to implement this aren't involved in the conversations. It, it may all sound really good until, you know, hate to use that phrase, but the devil's in the details. And if it just doesn't work in practicality, which is kind of what we're looking at in the Illinois interchange law, where it just doesn't really make sense when you get down to the, you know, the minutia of actually putting it into practice. Yeah. And it's always a trade-off because yeah. Okay. Then you let the, you know, you let the industry in and they'll obviously try to, you know, skew things to their advantage as well. It's just kind of well, and what's gonna a way to balance those out is the trick. Well, I think, I think the other thing about talking to an AI and this is where I think people make mistakes is, um, or there's this misconception. That's why I don't think we've defined it well enough. We just, we haven't gotten our mind around it, but let's say that, um, a consumer or somebody, you know, gets a call and it's legit. It's an AI system that's being, you know, calling from you know, we use our world of you know, financial institution, a bank about, uh, you know, your direct deposit stopped and that person, it, it discloses, hi, I'm, you know, Jake from blah, 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 the AI <laughs> guy. And uh, your direct deposit stopped. Uh, you know, we want to find out what happened, turn it back on if we can, help you out, whatever. And you realize as a consumer that you're speaking with an AI. And I think that one of the big concerns they were trying to get at here by, by imposing this transparency is that there is this myth that when you're talking to AI, all of your data that you're saying will then be used to train it in the future. Well, because, and while yes, that might be, yeah. and that, while that might be true, uh, the opt out and going to a person doesn't change that, especially if it's over the phone, because all of that will be, it could still be used because all of that stuff is recorded and AI is used to transcribe it. And it will definitely could be you, everything you do or say with the company, whether it be to a person, 
uh, whether, you know, unless you're right in front of them, unless you drive down there and stand in front of them, it's, you know, then that might be the only way where that data couldn't be sort of coerced out of the communication mechanism that you're using and used as uh, as training data for an AI. So I, I just think there's a lot of holes in this. Yeah, I mean, it's clearly not the end of the story. So, and I will post no. a link. Uh, there are a couple of law firms that actually weighed in kind of nicely on this one too. I think that's that's been the best education yeah. I've seen on it. So, and I'll I'll share the CPR to... link that had a lot oh, of really great. good data as well. Perfect. Yeah. Speaking of links, the other one that I want to kind of cover this one real quickly because I think we got some good stuff to talk about with Apple's recent announcements too. But we had covered earlier the Visa Mastercard settlement uh, with the merchants. That you know, case that's been going on for almost twenty years. And uh, guess what? <laughs> it looks like it's fallen apart, which is just phenomenal. I mean, back to the drawing board again. And I had forgotten until I started reading some of this coverage that, that it's actually been, quote unquote, settled twice before. And that settlement wound up kind of unraveling. Judges kind of gave, uh, had pause about it. So I'm not sure what happens. It hasn't officially been rejected yet, but it seems like even Visa and MasterCard are kind of resigned to the fact based on what the judge said at the last reading readout, that uh, it's probably not going to go through it in the current form. Uh, yeah. It should be what does that mean for like Discover and uh, and uh, Cap One? I got so many questions about Discover and Cap One. I mean, this is, you know, it, it the two are running in parallel. I don't know that it directly is related to it, but it clearly has some spillover effects. I don't know that it changes their likelihood of getting approved. And that one's gotten pretty quiet. I'm not really sure what to expect on that. But this is another one where Javelin, or Javelin Research put out a really nice piece uh, kind of going through this, which I found interesting. Uh, their analyst named Don Apgar, um, he's quoted heavily in this, and uh, he comes out pretty strong kind of going, you know, from a from a card issuer standpoint, you know, what the heck? You know, what, what is going on here? It doesn't make a lot of sense. It's pretty clear I think you can read between the lines. They, they've been very, very uh, vociferous in the marketplace. Uh, the National Retail Federation hated this uh, this settlement and they were pushing it hard. And I think they, they clearly, for whatever reason, they managed to kind of play an agitator role and get the uh, get the judge's ear. It's not, they, the judge hasn't actually, apparently the judge is committed to actually putting something in writing to say what they don't like about the settlement. So that would be fascinating reading. Uh, Bloomberg mentioned that one of the things that seemed to be a, a potential issue was some of the noise around digital wallets, which we had talked about in the past here on the BitCast, which it felt like it was almost kind of a, an outlier. It didn't seem to really fit into the rest of this agreement. I don't know why it was thrown in there in the first place. So if that's part of the reason that it might fall apart, it's kind of unfortunate and ironic. But uh, have you heard yeah, about this? What's that? Have you heard any more about this in terms of the? No, no. I think you've been following a bit closer to me. I I was all wrapped up in the Apple stuff. <laughs> well, let's uh, get let's get to that. Like I said, we'll post that javelin link as well. But uh, yeah, and, and you've been following the Apple stuff much more closely than I have, both in terms of their broader product announcement, but very specifically, you know, their own version of AI, Apple Intelligence. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, I was you know surprised they announced a lot of things. Um, you know, at their worldwide developer conference, the WWDC, which has become like a almost like a cult, really. Yeah. Um, yeah. but yeah, they they announced the they announced kind of you know uh, a lot of things that are happening, and uh, the, the big announcement was something called Apple Intelligence, and uh, you know, uh, I was surprised to hear that they were um. You know, because Apple kind of has been the one group that hasn't gotten in the game, right? And every time they do their, you know, they do their monthly call reports, you know, for the investors or whatever, I know that, you know, that was a lot of questions. When is Apple going to get in the game? And there was speculation that Apple was, you know, training the world's largest LLM out at their spaceship in Cupertino. <laughs> um, you know, uh, there was speculation that, uh, you know, they were going to... Uh, you know, they've been upgrading Siri and, you know, tomorrow Siri was going to be uh, a thing. And, and let's fall back to that, um, you know, about kind of Siri and where it is right now. So if you've used Siri lately or even the Google or any Alexa, you can, you know, uh, you can tell that it's just, you know, it just feels really like, I mean, it's, it's actually an article I'm planning on writing uh, that I think is very interesting is when something becomes uh, 
instant obsolescence. And right. It's, and it's amazing how quickly, I mean, yeah, it's not that so, broad. It felt so tired already. And I think LLM has really instantly obsoleted a lot of things. One of which is the knowledge base, right? The traditional, let's build a big database of all our stuff and, and then people can use it to find out what's going on. So I think, you know, the other thing that the LLM has instantly obsoleted was things like Siri and Alexa, other than the use cases that, you know, are a little more pedantic, uh, the timer, the weather. But um, so let's talk about what they did. Well, the first thing is they basically said that they're going to incorporate it into the new, they announced their new operating system, Sequoia, and they've announced that it's going to be incorporated into it. They've announced that they're enhancing Siri. And if Siri can't answer your question, it will go out. Uh, and the partner that they they brought up was OpenAI. I was about to, I, I was waiting to see and, if their name came in here. Yeah. But it was interesting because the way it was, it was, uh, it was sort of portrayed at the WWDC by the announcement was that, you know, OpenAI and them were in bed and they were going to do things together. But then I re I watched, a, there's this great guy who, if you're not watching him, he is just a fantastic interviewer. I think probably a fantastic person. I'd love to meet him. Uh, his name's Marquis. Uh, and, uh, or is it Marquette? I, I think it might be Marquette. But anyways, he did a personal interview with Tim Cook. He was a guy who started in high school just reviewing tech. And that's all he does. And he gets all the cool stuff. He's highly regarded, highly respected. He doesn't take any money from anybody. He buys the stuff himself. Uh, he has some sponsorships, but he discloses those. But anyways, he did a personal interview with him and he wanted to cover During, during the things. conference or separate? No, no, this was after. Oh. I watched a, an hour and a long interview with him and Tim uh, Tim Cook. And, wow, if he could get or, an or, hour, if he can get an hour of his time. He's that's, exactly, that's he's an amazing like, guy. Yeah. So anyways, basically the way I, I think they sort of put it was OpenAI is one of, it's the first and, and will be one of many of their AI options. I think they're leaving that door open. Um, but they, they definitely, uh, you know, announced that they were going to be using the open AI AI as uh, API as just like uh, Microsoft and others. And I got to think somewhere Microsoft or Google or, you know, all these guys that, you know, cause I mean, uh, using, I mean, OpenAI is, I wouldn't say it's a competitor. Obviously they're a partner of Microsoft's, but for, for, you know, Microsoft competes with Apple and a lot of things. Oh, they're, they're, an, they're an investment of Microsoft's too. So Microsoft is, in, I mean, I guess you could claim yeah. Microsoft is, you know, benefiting indirectly. But, you know, I, I heard a great argument about that too, that, um, Hey, if you're Microsoft, don't you want them to make money? And then bottom line is, is that, if you can get your software onto the most popular device, well, not in the world because, uh, you know, yeah, uh, Samsung, yeah, outside, yeah. outside of, of the U S but the billion devices of the, of the very, uh, you know, the folks who are going to use this sort of thing, uh, why wouldn't you do that? Right. And so that is their, their big piece. And then it came begging the question from before, right. From the Colorado piece we just talked about, which is, privacy. Well, one thing that they have focused on and I ah, actually they hang their hat on that. That's right. They hang their hat on that is data privacy and Tim Cook went into that extensively. Your data is not being captured, will not be used for training any AIs. Um and you know, we're not sending in we're not going to be using that or you know, open AI cannot do that or you know, he basically um said, "Hey, we're going to simplify and accelerate everyday tasks. We don't see AI. This is how Tim Cook put it. We don't see AI as a monster out to get us. But what we do see is it really could be used for everyday tasks. And they're totally right. I mean, there's so many dots that could be easily connected. And I'll give you an example that I think they're going to fix in Sequoia. I haven't downloaded it yet, but I intend to this weekend. Um, so right now, if you want to use ChatGPT to rewrite an email or something, uh, you could go into Copilot and Copilot's in, in Outlook, but it's just hard to sort of get it connected up together. And you kind of wind up cutting and pasting something and then getting an answer back and then purposely cutting and pasting that and putting it back in the email and sending that, right? But that integration shouldn't have to be that way. It should be, it should be you could write a set of rules that says, hey, uh, any emails you can't answer uh, about these subjects, I want you to answer because they're just like things like, 
your schedule? Do you have any time on Wednesday? Yeah, go ahead and answer that. You know, I mean, it's like my assistant. She knows. I trust her. I don't need to to focus on that. But um, let's say somebody asks a, a more detailed question like, what do you think of this? And you, your local AI based on, you know, you can see the memory now in ChatGPT, which, by the way, as of this recording, as we speak, is down right now. Um, and that's all together. Yeah, that's not the first time we've seen this. Wow. Um, but, uh, it seems to tend to be happening in very busy moments and I'm betting after, you know, and, and by the way, that begs another question, which I'll get to in a minute, but, um, about compute, but, uh, let's say that somebody asks a little more detailed question and while the AI has, you know, memory and knowledge of you sort of answering something like this before, you're not comfortable with it, just sending it out, but you want it to go ahead and draft something that you can review and then you can edit, click send, ask a question or two. Right. And then the other thing is, you know, having it prioritize things. Um, hey, you know, it knows what projects are hot. It, you know, I just think that they're right. I think that these everyday tasks could really pull together. And I think they're on the right track of how can we, you know, enable this stuff to be more integrated in a way. And I think Copilot's on that same track, by the way, in a way that is, uh, really powerful for users that, cause it really comes down to that, you know, how can John be 10 Johns, you know, in a day? And, and that's, that's kind of not that anybody wants 10 Johns, but, but let's get to the other issue. So the other question that, that it, this begs the question of is compute. Um, there, you know, my God, uh, NVIDIA, you know, by the way, I think I said a long time ago that, I, that you know, hey, watch a video. I think I said that like long before any of this happened because uh, I knew they were kind of going to be the, the technology that was going to sort of push this forward. But um, what's what's interesting about the compute is they're having trouble keeping up the way it is, you yeah. know, and they've got free versions and things like that. What happens when Siri, and they're not getting any money for this is kind of what we understood. Uh, it's a... I don't know, a two-way partnership, which everybody immediately theorized it was the data. So that's how they're the, but that wasn't it either because Tim Cook was very clear. But, you know, I wonder if it's, I wonder if there's some splitting hairs on that and I'll just kind of share it with you. So if I asked a question and, and it had to go out to open AI and answer that question, um, and the question was something like, uh, you know, I have uh $16,000 in the CD that's going to mature next week. Should I renew it or roll it or what should I do? Or should I pay off this revolving balance, blah, blah, blah. And I gave it specific numbers and I gave it specific account details. And, you know, it came back and I, I, I know it would come back with a good answer for that. Um, I'll give you the answer right now. Pay off the revolving balance. Yeah, everybody knows Continue. that. Sorry. But but yeah, you're right. Um, but the idea that... Um, the idea that they might take that, remove your personal data, but keep the request to train. Yeah. And, and I don't know where that line, I don't know where that line is yet. Um, and so, yeah, it's because if you get enough of those requests and they come from the same source, I can at least deduce that Glenn has a CD. I may not know the amount or, you know, it's just, it's curious. It's curious and, and uh, what's going to happen there. So. Yeah, I'm I'm excited. I think that this was a good announcement. I'm excited to see what they do with it. Um, they're known for the best integration uh, in the world. And every day I see this thing do new stuff that, I mean, before the Apple intelligence was even announced, where I go, dang, that was a, that's a really smart little connection between the two. That's um, I mean, several of the things. I mean, a couple of things just kind of tie the loose ends of what you were talking about. You know, first off, I, I hadn't, and that's why I love having these conversations with you. I had not put that together that given the extent to which Apple's brand is based on privacy, their commercials and everything else. And if that's one of the primary concerns about OpenAI, if they're now getting into that game, that has a great potential to shift people's perception on that. The other thing that came to my mind when you said, you know, people are starting to give them group, when are you going to get into AI? Why are you waiting? I mean, it wasn't that long ago, it's what, 15, 17 years now, that the investment community is like, when are you going to make a phone? Why have you not put the phone out yet? And, you know, that was still the days of Steve Jobs. It's like, calm down. We're going to get this right. We're going to get the. And when it did, obviously, they got it right. So 
if you know if we can assume that the company is still run in a similar fashion well yeah i mean that's wait, until they got approach. it right right well it's not wait till they got it right it's also let's watch what everybody else does and how they fail and what oh, right and that too work. that too right. but yeah. also don't stub i mean the other one i mean google's had and i thought this is a really interesting story the new york times did you know google's now in the condition of being the incumbent and you know when they make mistakes like you just mentioned with some of the stuff and the glue on the pizza and things like that they look dumb and that hurts their brand, but they've got this big installed base of search they have to protect now. So any mistakes they make in this new world also reflects poorly on them in their, you know, their bread and butter. So again, Apple's probably in that same boat. I'd like to think they're going to be set up in such a way that they're not going to run into those types of challenges or headaches. Yeah. Well, and I think that's why they distance, they didn't distance themselves, but they, they, Tim really made it, I wouldn't say made it clear, but he, OpenAI is one. Uh, I think they're keeping their options open. That's a, that's a really good point. They're not, as you said before, they're going to get in bed and do things together, which I thought was a great way of putting it. But no, I think you're right. It's like they're 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 leaving. You know, they're leaving their options open. That's not. They're not purely hardwired into them. Yeah, it says your your uh, your data is never stored, used only for your request, and it's verifiable privacy promise, which means they're going to have third parties look into it. Uh, they've now integrated ChatGPT directly into Siri and writing tools, but of course that includes their, their you know, I, I don't know why they still insist on having numbers and uh, what's the other thing, pages and, uh, but I, there, I guess there are people that still use them and they must still be out there. I do. Um, but, you know, well, and, and if you know it, I guess you do. Um, they they talked about what devices it's compatible with. Uh, you've got to have a iPhone 15 Pro Max, uh, a Pro. You have to have an IB Pro, iPad Pro, uh, iPad Air, MacBook Air, MacBook Pro. They all have to be M1 or later. iMac, Mac Mini. Everything has to be an M1 or an M2, or it won't work. And as we know, that's uh, over time. That's going to take care of itself, but it's not surprising. Well, and that's where they're going to. That's where you know they're going. I mean, they have been coming out with these M chips too. That was the other thing was they they really you know they they showed the sequoia preview which was pretty cool um but they've you know they keep announcing you know all these chips and it's like the I, I, chips are really moving um you know with regard to the speed and then they've been integrating into things like their pencil uh, you know and what that looks like uh so yeah it's it's pretty crazy how fast they've cranked up these ARM chips as a processing unit with a built-in uh, GPU and a neural processing unit. Um, and now they've just released the iPad Pro with an M4, which means that you know later this year, we're going to see the Max with an M4. And it makes me feel sad because I have a really fast M2 Pro Max here that I love. And I'm thinking, well, I, I don't know how it's going to compare to the rest of it. I, but, I good, like, like we were saying about Siri, and that one's going to feel really kind of droopy very soon, probably, unfortunately. I think so. I think so. So I don't know. Uh, but instant obsolescence is very interesting. Uh, they were talking about, you know, uh, what was it, a number of years ago when Apple had done uh, the issue, Apple had the issue of uh, they were tuning down the CPU because the battery wouldn't last as long, mm -hmm. or at least that was what they said, but... Uh, and a lot of people just walked away right then and there. Uh, they were like, what? You're purposely slowing down my phone instead of telling me to replace my battery? Who are you? <laughs> um, and, you know, why do you get to make that decision for me? And that really frustrated people. And thus, uh, you know, you, I, I've heard it called the fruit company. They won't even use the name, you know. <laughs> um, but anyway, so, yeah, that's what we know. And uh, do, you have, do you have a link to that? Uh, is that freely available? That uh, hour-long interview you mentioned with uh, Tim Cook. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah send that. Oh, we'll we'll include that in the show notes as well. This guy's awesome. Um, so yeah, he is the man. Oh, good. He's let's, such let's... a he does such a good job of uh, of how he goes through it. But yeah, he's, plenty to plenty to sink. I, I watch too. I watch this guy all the time. So. You know, you did mention Nvidia. I think we do need to, you know, point out to our uh, our listeners that you know Nvidia stock did drop ninety percent. You saw yeah. that, yeah, yeah, ten ten for one split after the Apple. Uh, yeah, it's a ten for one split. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's I mean, okay that's, with me because uh, that's I'm just wondering out. how many people like you know woke up that next day and went, "Oh my God, what happened?" 
you know, and, and the, the ironic, not ironic, but the amazing thing is, I mean, if you looked at a, uh, you know, a, a chart over a few years, I mean, you know, even if it had dropped by 90%, it would still be up. That's how well it's done. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's crazy. Uh, you know, the, how the, the stock has moved and yeah, I'm just blown away by all that. So yeah. Um, it's interesting stuff. Interesting times. No shortage of us to get back and talk about more of this. And I'm sure we will. And in fact, we've got our conversation next week on yes, we AI. If it works out perfect, perfect timing to, uh, to get. Yeah. If I'm allowed to talk about it, I may have to leave the state, head to Wyoming. <laughs> or at least prove that everybody that's listening is 18. I don't want the, I don't want the AI police breaking in to get me, but I don't know if my dog will protect me. So. Accuse you of algorithm I can't wait till we can put, I can't wait till we get to Doug. I think we're pretty close to Doug from up. And when I can make me a collar so that Shanti can talk to me, I think that's all over. I think that's the, you know, I think that's the moment. So everybody <laughs> write that down. All right. Well, Glenn, uh, I think that's, uh, that's it for this week. Uh, as always, uh, it's awesome to talk to you. Glenn, how can people find you if they want to, if they would like to work with you? Well, tra track me out at the Best Innovation Group website, big-fintech.com. You can find me on LinkedIn, or you can find me via my firm, 154 Advisors. Just drop a note to at 154 Advisors on Blue Sky, on X, or wherever you want to try it out. It'll probably work. Awesome. And you can find me in all those same places. Uh, I'm at JB Fintech and the Big-Fintech website and LinkedIn. Uh, just exciting stuff. And uh yeah, another day goes by, man. We are in such a wild ride right now. So I think there's more to come. Oh, absolutely. All, All right, man. John. You too. Take care. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for listening. Check back each week for the latest from the big cast. Or better yet, we hope you'll consider subscribing for free via Spotify, Stitcher, Apple, or wherever you get your podcasts. If you have questions or comments, we'd love to hear from you. Tweet us at Big Fintech. Email info at big-fintech.com or visit us at big-fintech.com and click on the media tab where you can post a comment or check out our archive of hundreds of past episodes. See you next week.